What is up guys? Welcome back to another GeekoWatt video. In today's video, I'm going to cut straight to the chase. Intel are back in a big, in a massive way with their latest 12th gen launch. A CPU release from Intel that you really should care about. In this video, we'll be looking at the latest 12th generation chips. We'll be looking at the performance figures, comparing them to the current Intel processors, and of course, the competitive Ryzen counterparts, and explaining to you guys why I think Intel might just be back on top with a couple of asterisks. More on those later. Let's do this. I'm going to start this video off by diving straight away into the performance benchmarks for synthetic and gaming tests and look at the architecture and the new side of the 12th gen launch later in the video. On your screen now, you'll see our Cinebench results for 12th gen alongside a wide range of processors to compare against. We'll highlight the new i5 12600K and i9 12900K, the two chips that we received uh, throughout, so you can tell which are which. We tested these against the last gen i5 and i9 from from Intel, the 11600K and 11900K, alongside a Ryzen 9 5900X, which comes in around the same price as the 11900K, and a Ryzen 5 5600X. While I've been talking and covering off the formalities, you've probably seen just how impressive the Intel results are. In fact, the i9 12900K beats out the Ryzen 9 by around 400 points. This is just on the single core side of things, while the 12600K is not far behind. We tested the 12600K with DDR4 memory as well as DDR5. This did reduce the score uh, somewhat by around about 5%, but more on that later. In fact, that's one of our asterisks, not to spoil things. Where Cinebench gets really interesting though is on the multi-core side of things, where Intel proved their dominance well and truly. The 12900K beats out our Ryzen 9 processor by around 6,000 points. That's around 30% against the Ryzen 9, which has been widely regarded as a bit of a monster. As much as the Ryzen 9 performs well, the i5 is arguably even more impressive. With DDR5 memory, we got 17 and a half thousand points, beating out the Ryzen 5 5600X by 70%. In a normal generational change, we'd expect to see maybe 10, 15, or if we're lucky, a 20% performance gain. It's clear to see that Intel have had in their locker some incredible results when it comes to 12th gen. But James, this is just Cinebench. What about your other tests? Well, next up is CPU Z. This is a great CPU benchmark that's widely regarded in our industry as being a great way of evaluating a CPU's performance. I'm happy to report that the single thread numbers were once again pretty good. 830 on the 12900K beat out the Ryzen 9, the last gen i9, the Ryzen 5. It basically topped the leaderboard well and truly. The i5 12600K was also really strong, surpassing the Ryzen 5 by around 20%. We didn't see a great deal of deviance here either between DDR4 and DDR5 memory, although arguably that's a change that will make more difference in gaming and that we'll discuss later in the video. We appreciate though that while these synthetic results are quite useful for comparing chip to chip, they're not very good from a gaming perspective. So we tested GTA 5, Watch Dogs, Fortnite, and Cyberpunk at varying resolutions. I should add that our test rig for all of these tests used an RTX 3080 Ti to ensure that the bottleneck would be on the CPU side and not on the GPU side of the equation. Memory was running at 4800 MHz. This is slightly higher than others have managed to achieve uh, when it comes to DDR5, where we had 32 gigabytes for both our DDR4 and DDR5 configurations. Here the i9 12900K impressed once again, but the i5 12600K proved itself to be a worthy competitor, beating out the Ryzen 5 5600X, the chip that it goes to compete against, and even beating out the Ryzen 9 when it came to gaming performance. GTA 5 being more a single thread title perhaps explains that difference here. Moving on to Watch Dogs Legion, we ran this first at 1080p ultra settings. This was to ensure the GPU didn't have to worry and that we could put as much pressure on the CPU side of things as possible. The lower the resolution, typically the more strain your CPU is going to be under. The i9 topped the leaderboard once again while the i5 was only 4 frames per second behind. Dropping down to DDR4, not DDR5 memory, knocked 3 FPS off the charts while the last gen i9 and the Ryzen 9, which performed similarly well, fell around 20 to 25 frames per second behind the brand new 12th gen processors. It was a similarly positive story though at 4K for Intel, a test where you'd expect to see less interference by the CPU in the frame rate. 
The i9 11900K was pretty paltry alongside the Ryzen 9, to be expected with their high core counts, but the 12600K and 12900K pulled a huge lead of 11 frames per second, or around about 20% in our Watchdogs 4K test. We also tested out Fortnite at 1080p competitive settings. This is with everything tuned down to low, the render distance set to far, and as much pressure once again on that CPU as possible. With 339 frames per second on the low end of the equation and 385 FPS on the high end of the equation, the i9 12th gen chip performed well. We did see a slight bias towards AMD here, something I've observed at all in all in Fortnite AMD's APUs, for example, are incredible in Fortnite compared to any other game, where the 12600K did fall behind at the Ryzen 9 a little bit. This is a little bit unusual given uh, the higher clock speeds and better single threaded performance that we found with our i5 12600K, but obviously a much cheaper CPU than a Ryzen 9 and more oriented towards gaming as opposed to multi-threaded workloads. During all of the synthetic and gaming tests, we observed the CPU temperatures using a mix of Hardware Monitor Plus MSI Afterburner and Reva Tuna. Here we did see the 12th gen chips get a little bit hotter from Intel. They ran around the 73 to 75 degrees Celsius region using the Asus Ryogen 360 millimeter cooler. This is perhaps the only slight downside that we've managed to observe from these 12th gen chips is that they do kick out a piece more heat attributed probably to the very high TDPs, especially that you'll find with the i9. To be clear, 73, 75 degrees Celsius is nowhere near thermal throttling territory at all, and the exceptional performance that we observe shows they weren't getting too hot, but it's something to definitely bear in mind if you're picking up the i5, perhaps don't pair it up with a Cooler Master Hyper 2 12 Evo as you might have been inclined to do so, pick up something a little bit more hefty. Now all of these performance results seem to show that what Intel have done with 12th gen has certainly worked. Worked. A mixture of normal cores and performance cores, and some really big disparities between the base and highest theoretical boost clock speeds, show that some of the software trickery and straight architectural genius that Intel have put together has paid off. These performance results though perhaps raise for me more questions than they answer, in a good way for Intel thankfully. We always knew or at least hoped that 12th gen would be a big performance leap. This is down to major architectural changes and a different manufacturing node. But what Intel appear to have done is something that we haven't seen in a long time, certainly not in my lifetime in the PC hardware industry. Obviously the mix of fancy software tweaks that Intel have incorporated, such as big disparities between the lowest base and highest theoretical boost clocks, and the mix of standard and performance cores has really worked here. And as further software optimizations in game engines and the like improve, I'd expect these Intel results to get even better. Better. DDR5 memory support is also a massive talking point when it comes to the 12th gen lineup, and something we should cover not only in this video, but our wider coverage of 12th gen as a whole. DDR5 provides higher speeds and much greater bandwidth, but if one thing's been clear from our testing, the technology is still in its infancy. Much like the launch of DDR4, I'd argue it's actually a little bit underwhelming, and you can see this from the difference between our DDR4 3600 MHz testing on those graphs from earlier, and our DDR5 44 or 4800 MHz testing on the new i9 and the i5 12600K. DDR5 is rumoured to be coming in around twice the price per gigabyte at present of DDR4. This will fall and it should fall pretty quickly, but for now a DDR5 oriented system is definitely going to be a more expensive way of doing things. I'd have a hard time right now recommending DDR5. It's expensive, we don't know what the stock and availability is going to be like, and it doesn't really provide much more in the way of performance. I think the best approach that I would take is if you're going for an i7 or an i9 chip, go for DDR5. If you're building an i5 oriented system, go for DDR4. We'll continue our testing on this front as the weeks and months progress, and as more stable BIOSes drop, Windows 11 comes out with better DDR5 support and games get better at optimizing for using that faster memory technology. When Harry, our in-house benchmark, has sent me over the Excel spreadsheet with our initial testing on, I had to ring him up on the phone and check that the results were accurate, check that nothing had gone wrong with the tests, because this performance differential is something we've never really seen before. Should you wait for AMD to respond with their alternative to DDR5 CPUs? Probably not. Not that AMD 
aren't likely to deliver some good chips too. But the last advice that I want to give in the current market is wait, there's something better coming because we all know how that turned out with RTX 3000. It's clear with 12th gen that Intel have thrown the ball well and truly in AMD's core and I'm excited to see what they come back with. And congratulate Intel for evidently making some really, really competitive CPUs once again. I just hope that we can buy them at anywhere near MSRP pricing. Thank you very much for tuning in though. Make sure to check out our other content if you haven't already. We always appreciate the support and we'll see you in the next one.